So here it is. Here is the minoxidil hyperresponder stack that excludes research chemicals with no FDA approval that I've been doing some research on developing. So for every one milliliter of solution, we would have the following. 5% minoxidil, 0.010% latanoprost, 0.1% trentinoin, and 5% azelic acid. All of course in a propylene glycol free solution, so the solution would be glycerin, water, and alcohol. And I say this because propylene glycol tends to cause people some sort of irritation, but that now being stated, let's get into the research. So I've mentioned this before on this channel, but here we go. The 1992 study conducted by Gerald A. Johnson et al. on behalf of the Upjohn company titled, quote, Minoxidil Sulfur Transferase, a Key Factor in Human Keratinocyte Differentiation, unquote, established that minoxidil sulfate plays a crucial role in promoting hair growth. This is because the sulfur transferase enzyme transforms minoxidil into the active ingredient that grows hairs, and this is minoxidil sulfate. Other studies have also indicated the effectiveness of topical retinoids like trentinoin in enhancing the sulfur transferase activity on the skin and scalp, thereby benefiting non-responders and also responders to minoxidil. Although it's worth mentioning that some of these studies mentioned have limited sample sizes, it definitely does warrant notice because outside of it being used with minoxidil, topical retinoids have been shown to increase sulfur transferase activity, primarily due to the cell turnover rate that it causes. So again, I'm going to mention two studies that involves using topical tretinoin and other retinoids in conjunction with minoxidil. So the first one is titled, quote, Topical Tretinoin for Hair Growth, published in 1986 by G.S. Brazano et al. in the Journal of the American Academy of Dermatology, which included 56 subjects. The second study titled, quote, Efficacy of 5% Minoxidil versus Combined 5% Minoxidil and 0.01% tretinoin for male pattern hair loss, a randomized double-blind comparative clinical trial, unquote, involved 31 male subjects aged 28 to 45. And there are some other studies, of course, that examine retinoids and minoxidil use, but these studies underscore the significance of the sulfur transferase activity in hair growth, as minoxidil sulfate is the active component responsible for this effect. Without the presence of sulfur transferase enzyme on the scalp, a lot of people would just suddenly turn into minoxidil non-responders. And that, again, is why we have non-responders and varying response rates to minoxidil because of that presence of sulfur transferase activity. Some people have more sulfur transferase enzymatic activity on their scalp. Some people have less. And I would say a majority of the people fall into some sort of average range. So you can think of it as some sort of bell curve. So right away, we can already see how a compounded solution of minoxidil and tretinoin would create a convenience in terms of application, as well as a boost in effectiveness. Because if tretinoin boosts sulfur transferase activity on the skin, then minoxidil will be able to take advantage of this hyper sulfur transferase state on the scalp in order to turn into minoxidil sulfate. And again, that is the active ingredient responsible for growing hair. So what about other compounds that I've mentioned? Latanoprost and other prostaglandin analogs. Prostaglandins play a role in hair growth through various mechanisms. While the exact mechanisms are not even fully understood, likewise with minoxidil, might I add, research suggests several ways in which prostaglandins contribute to hair growth. So we have the stimulation of hair follicle activity. Prostaglandins such as prostaglandin E2, or PGE2, have been shown to stimulate the activity of hair follicles. They can promote the transition of hair follicles from the resting phase, the telogen phase that is, to the growth phase, the anagen phase, leading to increased hair growth. There's also the prolongation of the anagen phase, so prostaglins have been found to prolong the anagen phase, which is the active phase of growth. By extending this phase, prostaglandins contribute to longer and fuller hair growth. And in that same vein, increased hair follicle size. Prostaglandins may also influence the size of hair follicles, and the research on this suggests that they can promote the enlargement of the hair follicle itself, which can result in thicker and denser hair growth. Now, you can already see some similarities to the proposed mechanisms in which minoxidil works, or 
even how minoxidil is seen to affect some people. So we can already see that maybe minoxidil has some sort of influence on prostaglandins, and we'll talk more on this later. So going back to prostaglandins, there are some studies that we could look at. In a randomized double-blind placebo-controlled pilot study conducted by Bloom Patavi et al., the efficacy of topical treatment with latanoprost 0.1% on hair growth and pigmentation was assessed in healthy male volunteers with mild androgenetic alopecia. The primary objectives of this study were to evaluate the effectiveness of latanoprost on hair growth and whether or not it would even be effective at all as well as hair pigmentation, while the secondary objectives included examining the impact of scalp pigmentation, as well as determining the treatment duration required for noticeable changes and assessing the safety of latanoprost. Over 24 weeks, so about half a year, six months, 16, 16 participants applied either latanoprost or placebo to two mini zones of the scalp. Measurements of hair growth density diameter and pigmentation, as well as the antigen to telogen ratio performed throughout the study, were also factored in in the final results. In the end, the results revealed a significant increase in hair density, terminal and vellus hairs, at the latanoprost treated site compared to the baseline and the placebo treated area after 24 weeks. The study suggests that latanoprost may have a potential to stimulate the hair follicle activity, and effectively treat hair loss. Now, there are some criticisms I can give to this particular paper, being fair, that is. Such a small amount of samples, only 16 participants. Not only that, but we know that some areas on the scalp are more androgenetic sensitive than others. So if you're, so if you're applying a solution on the hairline versus the back of the head where we have DHT resistant zones, then that may factor into the effectiveness and seeming efficacy of the overall trial itself. We also have a literature review titled, quote, Does Prostaglandin D2 Hold the Cure to Male Pattern Baldness? Unquote, by Neves and Graza. The role of prostaglandin D2, or PGD2, in androgenetic alopecia is explored here. The review highlights that PGD2 has been found to be elevated in the bald scalps of men with androgenetic alopecia and PGD2 is capable of inhibiting hair lengthening. The enzyme responsible for synthesizing PGD2, prostaglandin D2 synthase, has been shown to be hormone responsive in multiple organs. The review discusses the two known receptors of PGD2, GPR44, and PTGDR with GPR44, that's such a mouthful, being necessary for hair growth inhibitory effects of PGD2. So essentially they're saying that there are other enzymes that create PGD2 and if you can completely remove or limit PGD2 by reducing the presence of these enzymes and if you can reduce PGD2 then you may have some sort of solution to the other sort of prostaglandins that contribute negatively contribute to androgenetic alopecia so there are good prostaglandins like the ones we find in latanoprost and bromatoprost and there are bad prostaglandins which contribute to hair loss and the authors also mention this as well because they talk about latanoprost and bromatoprost being other prostaglandin analogs that can stimulate hair growth but overall more research is needed in this particular area Next, the literature review titled, quote, Minoxidil, Mechanisms of Action on Hair Growth, unquote, delves into our current understanding of how minoxidil stimulates hair growth and the potential mechanisms involved. Minoxidil has been recognized for its ability for hair regrowth for over 30 years, yet even then, the precise mechanism of action is kind of limited. The review highlights that minoxidil likely induces premature entry of resting hair follicles into the growth phase, the antigen phase, and also prolongs the duration of antigen leading to increased hair follicle size, but the specific cellular mechanisms underlying these effects are not fully understood. One promoted mechanism of action is minoxidil's ability to open up potassium channels through its metabolite minoxidil sulfate. Minoxidil, when being administered orally, acts as a potassium channel opener to lower blood pressure. 
and this review suggests that the stimulatory effect of minoxidil and hair growth may also involve the opening of potassium channels by minoxidil sulfate. However, it is important to note that the expression of these specific potassium channels in the hair follicle has not been definitively demonstrated. Furthermore, the review explores various in vitro effects of minoxidil on different cell types. And remember, in vitro means outside of the body in some sort of petri dish. So it's cells isolated from the human body. I just thought that I would add that in there because some people have told me they've been confused about that term. Anyway, it has been shown that minoxidil induces stimulation of cell proliferation, inhibition of collagen synthesis, and also the modulation of prostaglandin synthesis. Minoxidil has been shown to have variable effects on cell growth and collagen synthesis in different studies, making it challenging to draw a definitive conclusion about how it works. The involvement of prostaglandins in hair growth is highlighted with minoxidil being found to stimulate prostaglandin E2 or PGE2 synthesis and also inhibiting other bad prostaglandins. And if you can remember, like I said earlier, latanoprost and other prostaglandin analogs like bimatoprost and trivaprost, they help increase PGE2. So if you're using latanoprost or bimatoprost to increase PGE2 on the scalp, and you're also using minoxidil, again, minoxidil taking advantage of the sulfur transferase activity increased by tretinoin, and now with the introduction of latanoprost and bimatoprost, now being able to use more PGE2 to effectively grow more hair, I would see that this hair stack that I'm coming up with could be a bit more efficacious than your standard 5% topical minoxidil. Because you have all of these synergistic factors that operate in different proposed mechanisms of action that minoxidil sulfate comes to take advantage of. And finally, azelic acid. Now, when it comes to azelic acid, it has been demonstrated to be an anti-androgen. However, again, only in vitro. And to reiterate, this means outside of the human body. And the reason why this is a thing to consider, important thing to consider, is that sometimes cells act differently when they're isolated outside of the human body. And the human body is a complex machine with some processes that are known and a lot that are kind of unknown that we just have a bit of a feeling on. So whatever happens to a cell isolated outside of the body doesn't necessarily mean that it would convert fully over in terms of its mechanism fully over into that cell when it's placed in a different environment, that being the human body. But nevertheless, it has been shown to reduce sebum on the scalp and the skin, which in turn can promote a healthier scalp condition. Well, now that I've said all that, the article titled, quote, The Inhibition of 5-Alpha Reductase Activity in Human Skin by Zinc and Azelic Acid, unquote, explores the inhibitory effects of zinc and azelic acid on the 5-Alpha Reductase enzyme. And again, this enzyme is involved in androgenetic alopecia because it metabolizes testosterone into DHT. The study investigates the potential of these compounds as a therapeutic agent for androgen-related skin pathologies, being acne, and as well as hair loss. The researchers conducted in vitro experiments using human skin to evaluate the effects of zinc sulfate and azelic acid on 5-alpha reductase activity. The results of the study demonstrated that both zinc sulfate and azelic acid effectively inhibited 5-alpha reductase activity in human skin, Zinc sulfate exhibited potent inhibition with complete enzyme suppression observed at high concentrations. With azelic acid, on the other hand, it also showed strong inhibitory effects even at a low concentration. When used in combination, the two compounds exhibited an additive effect resulting in enhanced inhibition of 5-alpha reductase activity. And also admittedly, I have to say this is an in vitro study, so we haven't seen this being applied to someone's scalp, there being scalp biopsies, topical finasteride and topical dutasteride are far more efficacious in terms of what research has shown than azelic acid or zinc sulfate when combating androgenetic alopecia in vivo, which means on live human patients. So now here with my final thoughts. 
I will say that with the given body of research, I think this stack would be effective, and perhaps maybe a bit too effective. I say this because whatever benefits one may be getting from the increased availability of sulfur transferase enzyme due to tretinoin, as well as the additional prostaglandins, the, the good prostaglandins that is being PGE2, that latanoprost or even bromatoprost brings to the scalp, likely needs to be coupled with minoxidil in order to keep whatever hair growth may come about. That is, you may not be able to just drop the other aspects of the stack, specifically being tretinoin and latanoprost or bromatoprost, whichever you choose to use, and just use regular old topical minoxidil. So that's a bit of a fair warning from me to whoever may be thinking about using a similar stack. Well, that's it for this video. It's kind of a bit long. I'm maybe like 15, 20 minutes. But if you got this far, comment pineapple juice. We've been having that go on for a bit in a couple of videos now. And be sure to join the new Discord community, guys. Link in the description and also in the pinned comment. I'll see you guys later. Peace out.